y over i y y multiplied by z, right? So if we look at element h, okay, if we look at element h, so stress x, okay, uh, what I did, uh, I'm going to do the same, or element h, right? Stress x is equal to what? So element h is at centroid is equal to zero. Y is equal to uh, equal to zero because Z is equal to zero. It's at the uh, centroid or the geometric axis. Okay. So the next one is element uh, element K, and element K stress X is equal. So you know that it's going through what compression. So it's going to have minus sign. Okay. That's why I, I I force you all to to do the concept about uh, head of the moment vector and the tail end moment vector. Once you have all this, you're done, okay? All right, so we realize now from here, the deformation pattern, right? Due to the uh, moments, the deformation will look like, will look like this. Okay, all right, so this is the deformation pattern. And the last view, okay, so the last view that we're going to take. Is the front view, okay, so now. I'm going to draw over here. So this is my Y. This is my Z. And then we have our rotation in the X. Okay, so I'm going to sketch this out now. I'm going to uh, I'm going to sketch this out. Okay. So this is our structure, and then I'm going to sketch our our hidden detail in dotted line. Okay, and then again, I'm going to draw our element. So this is our element H. And this is our element K. And then we put in our forces. Okay, so you have a 150 over here. You have a 200. And then at your geometric uh, axis, oh, you have to put in your geometric axis, okay? And on your geometric axis, we have over here, we have, uh, uh, no, 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 this I don't have. Over here, we have 150 pounds, and we also have 50 pounds, right? So there's something new over here, right? So the next one, right, for, for this case, right, we have a 200 and then we have a perpendicular distance, right? We have a perpendicular distance over here now, which we did not consider before right and this is uh equal to 10 inch so this will generate a talk about an x-axis which is equal to 200 multiplied by 10 so it's equal to 2000 um, each. And this is a top Y. Okay, I'm going to sketch how the structure were, were, were deformed. Okay, so the structure under this uh, deformation, okay, is going to deform this way. Okay, it's going to deform this way. So it will deform 
this way. Right? So this will be the pushing 200 pounds. Right? So if you were to look at the uh, geometric axis, right? Right? After deformation, it is still at the same position. Right? You realize that the geometric axis uh, uh, will not shift. or deform during loading, right? So when that is the case, okay, the applied force together with the uh, radius, or you can call it perpendicular distance also, okay? It's also perpendicular distance, yes or no? Okay, perpendicular distance. Will generate a talk. Yeah, we'll generate a talk. Right? So if you look, if you look at this, the deformation is a dot, right? If you look at bending moment, the deformation is a what? It's either a set phase, right? Or uh, it can be smiling phase. You look at the deformation pattern, it is different. Yes or no? Okay. So when the centroid, right, when the centroid still remains at the same position during uh, deformation, then this is where we classify it as a torque, okay? So the formula that we're going to apply to is shear is equal to Tx uh, multiplied by the radius divided by J, right? So the torque for element H and element K is not equal to zero. Okay, there, 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 there is a value for it. Okay, so I'll just show you how we identify moment, torque, axolote, and bending moment. Okay, it's, it's very difficult to see in 3D just like this. Okay, but if you break it down in 2D and you apply the rules that I specify, is very 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 easy okay it's very very easy okay let's try i know this is the first time you are seeing it and and i want you i want you to to get used to it. oh let's try something like this okay let's try something like this okay so this is uh outside on a new page so let's try okay something in in in, in this sort of form so we have example Two. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are again going to identify what is our torque, moment, axolot, so on and so forth. All right, so over here we are given that we have a transformation. And a transformation, this is our Y. This will be our X. And over here will be our Z. The element of interest is element H. Okay, so you have your respective distance. And you look at the 13 kilonewton is applied in a, in a certain direction. Okay, it is tilted about, so the, the applied force is acting on the 
if you look at the planes, it's acting on the YZ plane. Yeah, it's acting on the YZ plane. So if it's acting on the YZ plane, we are very sure that we are going to have, a, a, I'm going to call this our, it's from point D. This is the direction of our DY. And then this is our direction of our DZ. Okay, so we have, we have a vector, okay. Uh, and the vector has a Y and Z component. Okay, so to, to find the y and, uh, dy by dz, you can you can use the angle rule or you can use geometric uh, uh, relative uh, distance. Okay, so there there are two ways that you can do this. Okay, so you can you can you can find the angle. So we know that this is our theta, right? So theta, so tangent theta is equal to uh, what is equal to 125 divided by 300. So theta is equal to uh, 125 divided by 300 inverse tangent 22.619 or 22.62 yeah, 22 degrees. Okay, so wait, let me do one to five divided by 300. Okay, inverse tangent, yep, 22.62. So we know that dz is equal to uh, dz is equal to, so knowing the angle, so that is 13 times 10 to power 3 sine of 22.62 degrees. So sine 22.62, sine, uh, sine 22.62 times by 13 power 3 is equal to 5. Okay. And then dy cos of 22.62. Times by 13. So it's equal to 12,000. You can use the angle or you can use the distance. So in order to use the distance, what you will do is one to five. Okay, so uh, method number two. The answer will be the same. It's similar triangles basically. So it's equal to one to five over by square root of uh, one to five squared plus by 300 squared. So this will be equal to our dz divide by 13 times 10 to the power 3. Okay, so from here, dz will be equal to, so 1 to 5 squared plus by 300. Ah, squared, it look like a cube, EJ, come on. So 1 to 5 squared plus by 300 squared, square root whole thing. Uh, then you have 1 to 5 divided by that, then multiply by 13 to the power 3, you get 5,000. So the answer is the same and uh, give me one more minute. OK, so if you do 300. Over square root. Yeah. So what what this will help is uh, if you mix up with your sine cosine, then you can be in trouble. For this case, you don't need to worry about your sine cosine. Okay. But I'm not saying sine cosine is difficult. It's not difficult. Also. So 1 to 5 squared plus by 300 squared square root. So 300 divided by 3 to 5, multiply 30 by 3, is equal to 12 times 10 to 3. Answer is exactly the same. Okay, go for a five minutes break. We come back, we identify uh, what is the top, what is the moment with this, okay? <laughs> 